everyone, it's Chrissy and Munchkin here from the Duncan Ducks and today we're going to be talking about everything I keep in my pet ducks vet kit just in case of emergencies. As some of you probably already know, finding a veterinarian that will see your pet ducks can be quite difficult, especially if you end up with an emergency situation in the middle of the night. So here's some products that I recommend keeping on hand just in case of emergency, although hopefully you'll never have to use them. I'm going to start off with some super basic things that everyone should have in their duck's first aid kit, starting with gloves. I keep gloves on hand for a lot of reasons, but some of the main ones are if I ever ran into a lash egg, you definitely want, don't want to touch that. You don't want to touch bumblefoot either because that could be a staph infection, which you can get yourself. And of course, anything that has to do with duck poop or their blood, you probably don't want to be touching either if you can prevent it. I also keep on hand disposable sterile scalpels, tweezers, nail clippers, and medical grade scissors. The scalpels could come in handy in a case of bumblefoot, although personally, I do have a waterfowl vet, so I would probably just bring my duck there, but you never know when else you could need these. Tweezers could come in handy if they have a splinter. And nail clippers come in handy for ducks as well because most of the time you don't ever have to clip your duck's nails. But personally, I have a couple ducks who have toenails that either grow backwards or like their dew claw doesn't get trimmed naturally, so those I do have to cut. But nail clippers can also be useful in an emergency situation, such as one where your duck's nail is almost falling off because they got it caught on something. You're going to end up having to cut it off anyway, and it's probably easiest to do with nail clippers. Speaking of nail clippers, though, if you accidentally cut your duck's nail too far back and you hit the quick and it starts bleeding, I keep Lot it on hand or this is called quick stop which is a type of stipic powder bird blood is pretty terrible at clotting on its own so these can actually be life-saving even for super minor cuts or scrapes i actually just used this clot it powder a couple days ago when munchkin got a cut on her foot i don't really have a preference for one or the other although i do like the bottle this one comes in because i can like shake it out directly onto the wound whereas this one i have to put it on like the cap and then dip their toenail in and it's kind of a bit messier just keep in mind though that these are better situated for minor things and not severe things. If you have something like a predator attack that's probably going to require stitches, I would recommend just getting to a vet as quickly as possible because I don't necessarily think that this will prevent them from bleeding out in those situations. In case of egg binding or problems with my duck's feet, I can provide them a warm bath with Epsom salts that I keep in hand. But also for egg binding, I keep on hand these like cotton swabs that are like longer and KY jelly. When Hash Brown Montana was egg binding, I started off by using olive oil to help lubricate her vent, but when I took her to the vet, they actually recommended specifically using KY jelly because it's water-based and apparently more effective. So I would definitely recommend this. And to apply it, I would put it on the end of one of these cotton swabs and kind of get up in there and put it all around the egg. It was a lot easier to use these rather than my finger and probably a lot more comfortable for her too. Unfortunately, while I was setting up this video, I picked up my bottle of iodine and it turns out the lid wasn't fully on. And if you don't know anything about iodine, I'm going to tell you it's really good at staining things. So some of the things that I had in my vet kit were unfortunately ruined and I am going to have to get new ones of them. One of those being gauze pads. I literally just found this in my bathroom, but you can get any kinds of gauze pads, um, big ones, small ones. You never know what kind of injury you're going to have to deal with that these could be really useful. There are a lot of different situations you could run into with your pet ducks where you might need something like vet wrap. In my experience, my ducks are really good at being able to flick this off. So I also get this product, which is just a waterproof adhesive tape. And I use that to kind of like stick it onto their legs so they're less likely to be able to flick off the vet wrap. Next up, we have chlorhexidine solution. This is a topical antiseptic that's used to clean the skin. You could also use betadine, which is a type of iodine for this. I would show you my iodine, but it unfortunately spilled everywhere. And as I said earlier, stained a lot of things and it was a big mess. So that went directly into the trash. <laughs> From what I have researched though, the chlorhexidine solution is actually a lot more effective and beneficial compared to betadine or iodine because it has a residual effect against bacteria. So I'll prefer this anyway and I probably won't be buying the iodine again because I don't need to be staining anything else. Speaking on the same note, I also have saline solution. I keep this on hand in case of an eye injury that needs to be washed out. It is sterile and a disinfectant just like the chlorhexidine solution, but I would probably use that for any kind of like wounds or things like that, whereas this is specifically more for their eyes because I know it won't sting. And next up we have bag balm. Bag balm is essentially a liquid band-aid that helps keep things moisturized. If I remember correctly, this was actually quite expensive, but I believe Tractor Supply actually has a really smaller version and to be honest, for most things, you're probably not going to need this much anyway. 
On that same note, we have drawing salve. I personally prefer to use the Prid drawing salve, which comes in this little orange tin, but when I was not able to find this one, I got this one, which is, I think, specifically used for horses, or at least I found it in the horse aisle. I do just want to note, though, that this is considered homeopathic medicine, or also known as alternative medicine. It's said to be able to help draw out inflammation, it can help draw out splinters, and it can also relieve pain from minor cuts and bruises. I have used this once before. One time I woke up and Munchkin apparently had no use of one of her legs and it was a little hot and I put this on it and within a few hours she was back to her normal self. Does that mean this necessarily worked? No, she could have just had like a pinched nerve or something that made her leg a little funny, but um, it appeared that it worked, but I'm not saying that it did. Both the Prid and the Bag Balm are often recommended to be used when you have any kind of foot injury or something like Bumblefoot, but of course, do your own research and decide what you want to do for your own ducks before using them. And I also just want to mention that I have this little jar of something called Calendula salve. I'm not sure if this is also considered a drawing salve, but basically I got this when I was subscribed to like a chicken box that came every month and they sent some things to include in our vet kit. This was one of those things. I've never used it. I probably never will use it because I think I have things that work better. But if you're interested in things that are like natural like this product or organic, I will let you know what this supposedly does. It says that the calendula plant contains natural antiseptic and antimicrobial properties that work wonders for cuts, scrapes, acne, bug bites, eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, rashes, ulcers, spider veins, and much, much more. So just thought I would let you guys know about that. And next up we have petroleum jelly or Vaseline. Funny story about this is I initially bought Vaseline because I thought that it would help prevent frostbite. And to be honest with you, a lot of people believe that it'll help prevent frostbite and I believed it too. But as it would turn out, Yes, this stuff does create a moisture barrier and creating a moisture barrier can help prevent frostbite. However, it also has a freezing point. So if it gets past that freezing point, it could literally freeze onto your duck's feet and bills and make the frostbite 10 times worse. So obviously, never gonna use it for that. However, if I ever had a duck with a bot fly problem, I could use this to help suffocate the bot fly so that I could remove it. But if you are looking for something that can help actually prevent frostbite, I've heard a lot of good things about Musher's Secret. I don't own it myself because it really doesn't get cold enough here to actually have to worry about frostbite, but that is something that I would like to add to my vet kit in the future, just in case. And next up, we have medical grade Manuka honey. Now, honey in general has a lot of healing properties, but this is medical grade, so that's why I prefer it. And also, I have just heard so many amazing things about Manuka honey healing cuts and wounds specifically that I think this is definitely better than just keeping any old honey around. And while we're on the topic of homeopathic medicine, I want to bring up oil of oregano. Specifically right now, it's super important to talk about this one because as some of you may know, a few years ago, Canada actually banned um, over-the-counter livestock antibiotics. And this year coming in June in the United States, we're also going to be banning over-the-counter livestock antibiotics. So that means you won't be able to go to Tractor Supply or Rural King and pick up penicillin or any other kind of antibiotic for your birds. So I have heard a lot of great things about oil of oregano having healing properties. I can't guarantee any of that, but this is one homeopathic thing that I personally choose to believe in. And as we know, things are gonna get a little bit more tricky here with treating our animals if you don't have access to a vet, so it would be good to have this on hand. And while we're on the topic of antibiotics, there's actually very few that I actually stocked up on knowing that this ban is coming to the United States. Um, I don't want to buy a ton of it because I know that it has an expiration date anyways and personally I am lucky enough to be able to have a really great waterfowl vet not too far away so when I do run into a problem that is serious enough to need antibiotics I know that I can get them but I'm just going to share with you what I decided to purchase ahead of the ban. So I did get teramycin ointment. This is specifically used for injuries on the eye. So like if she got a cut on her eye or something, this is what I would use. And then next I wanna bring up silver sulfadiazine cream. I actually don't think you could have gotten this before without a prescription. I know that I personally was prescribed it from the vet. This is something that can be used on things like bumblefoot or wounds on their feet, just like some of the other things I mentioned earlier. But I have even heard from the director of a waterfall sanctuary that this stuff is like gold and absolutely the best thing that you can use. Now, as I said, you might not be able to get this, but if you have access to a vet that can write you a prescription when you do need it, I would definitely try checking this out.
And as far as antibiotics go, that's all I'm keeping on hand. I have used tetracycline before, but I had it prescribed by the vet. And honestly, I don't trust myself with figuring out dosages, especially for such tiny little animals. So I'll leave that to the vet's hands and hopefully we don't run into any emergencies where I need it immediately. If your pet duck ever ingests something that is incredibly toxic, it is super important to get something into them immediately to remedy that situation. In which case, if you have olive oil on hand, that can work great. However, even better than that is activated charcoal. I got these in like pills on Amazon. I would probably just crush them up and syringe feed it to them. Um, but activated charcoal can do a really good job of just clearing out their system and getting any toxins out. Honestly, if I knew my ducks ate something toxic, I would probably give them this first and then hop in the car and get to the vet. This is called Schreiner's Herbal Solution. This was also something that I got from the chicken subscription box vet kit. So I've actually never used this. I probably never will use this, but I just want to let you guys know about it. According to the directions on the back of this, it is good for open wounds, cuts, fungus, and other skin disorders. I should have actually brought this up when I was talking about the vet wrap as well, but you can actually get little duck booties to put on your duck's feet if they ever do have any kind of injury to protect their feet and keep them safe. These are also great if you're going to go like walking somewhere on like concrete or cement or something. Personally, I have found that my ducks are really, really good at kicking them off. So I really try not to use them, but any kind of situation where I do need to keep their foot super clean, this is definitely something I would just have on hand. Now, if I had any kind of vitamin deficiency or something going on, I have a lot of different vitamins and electrolytes for pretty much any situation, but what you need to use is going to depend on what kind of deficiency your ducks have or what kind of injury they have. You know what I mean. I'm just gonna tell you all the different ones that I have. Um, so the first one is Rooster Booster. Then I have this Immune Glow. I also have the little save a chick electrolyte packets the vitamins and electrolytes from prairie pride this one is probably my personal favorite because i think it just has um, some of the best ingredients and then i also have the vitamins and electrolytes from happy hen treats and then these i actually got as prescriptions but you can buy these on i think chewy and even amazon this is nectin s oh they're actually both nectin s there's definitely another nectin one that i have though i think it might be nectin k or nectin e but Regardless, one of these I was prescribed when Maple had a selenium deficiency, and I had another one prescribed... I can't remember what the other one was prescribed for. The Nectin brand specifically actually makes a lot of different vitamin supplements for birds, so pretty much any kind of vitamin supplement that you might need, I would definitely look into this brand. I have always gotten it from the vet, but I know that you can get it from other places like Chewy or Amazon if needed. And another supplement that I keep on hand is the calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D3 little powder package here. So if you have a calcium deficiency that's causing like egg issues, soft eggs, egg binding, etc., most of the time you're going to be recommended giving them calcium. But if calcium isn't working, your duck might also have a magnesium deficiency or a vitamin D3 deficiency. So this is all binded together and it can make it a lot easier to fix the problem um, if you're not sure which deficiency they have. I also keep probiotics on hand. These just help maintain digestive health, but if you ever end up giving your birds an antibiotic, it's always a good idea to follow up with probiotics to help, you know, rebuild all their gut bacteria and whatnot. I also have Monistat, and this is probably not something I would keep in my vet kit in general. However, I did end up having a duck that basically had a yeast infection, and this was the recommended treatment. So I have some leftover that stays in my vet kit, and I believe this can also be used to help treat vet glee. You may already know that I don't really recommend washing your ducks with soap, but I do keep Dawn dish soap in my vet kit just in case of an issue such as wet feather, or if I do, for some unknown reason, need to wash my ducks, like if they got into a bucket of oil or something and they actually had to be washed, this is what I would use, the blue bottle with the duck on it because I know that it's safe for ducks compared to a lot of other soaps. I almost forgot to mention these, but I have a bunch of syringes which are used for Unfortunately, syringe feeding ducks that aren't eating or syringe feeding ducks medication. I have them in a bunch of different sizes for whatever problems I might run into. If you are ever going to syringe feed your duck, whether it be their food or their medication, definitely consult with a veterinarian or watch a tutorial at the very least first because you definitely do not want to put the food or medication into their airway, which can be very easy to do with ducks. With that being said, I also just recently purchased tube feeding kits for my ducks. I have found great success with syringe feeding, so I'll probably never need this, but I have it just in case. Another thing that I think is really important to consider is that if you ever have an injured duck, what are you going to do with it? Where are you going to put it? And that is why I have this 
pop-up dog kennel for my ducks. So this works absolutely amazing because as you can see, it folds up really nicely into this little circle and I can put it in a bag and store it away for most of the time when I'm not using it. But when it pops open, it's about four feet long by two feet by probably two or three feet high. So it's just enough space for the duck to be able to walk around and stuff, but they're safe in a nice environment inside my house and not running all over and pooping on the carpet, you know? If you don't have a pop-up kennel, you can use a dog crate, or honestly, you can even put them in your bathtub as long as they're not going to be slipping around. But whatever you do, you might want to put something on the floor so that it catches all of their poop. Personally, I use these puppy pads. You could also use a newspaper or just really whatever works for you. One thing to keep in mind with puppy pads, though, is if you have any kind of injury where your duck needs to be kept warm or you're using like a heat plate or something, I don't recommend putting puppy pads under that because some types of puppy pads actually can release toxic fumes if they get hot. And now I just want to talk about a few products that I don't keep in my vet kit. Although, obviously, I actually do own these two, but I don't use them. Specifically the blue coat. I have used this before. I regret using it before. I did think it worked before, but I know better now and I'm not going to use it again. It's just here because it is helpful when I make videos like this where I talk about it. So let's talk about what blue coat is and what it is not. So basically, this is an antiseptic wound spray that turns your animals blue or purple. I had actually heard about this from a friend who had great success using it when one of their birds actually was attacked by a weasel and it did appear to work. But let me just read you the back of the container. It specifically says, prevent dog from licking treated area. Do not apply to cats, not for use on horses intended for food, for external animal use only. Now, here's what I pick up from that. You don't want your animal ingesting this. It's not to be used on food producing animals. Now, ducks produce food, whether you are using them for meat or even if you're just consuming their eggs or even if you're not consuming their eggs, but you're letting someone else or another animal consume their eggs, this isn't safe for that. And in my opinion, the even more important reason that I don't trust this to be used on my animals is because it says prevent dogs from licking it and don't apply to cats, probably because they lick their fur. Here's the thing. Ducks preen their feathers. If this gets on their feathers, they preen their feathers. There's no real way of really stopping them from preening their feathers. And then they're ingesting it. And obviously they're not supposed to be ingesting it. So this one goes in the trash. One other thing that I have, but probably will never end up using is hydrogen peroxide. I know this has uses, but I feel like it's just kind of become a little bit more controversial recently. Like I know people used to always say, oh, if your dog gets into something, give them hydrogen peroxide to make them throw up. But I've seen a lot of like vets online that are like, don't do that. So I just get a little sketched out by the hydrogen peroxide. I have it. I've had it for years. But I think if I have like, you know, if they ingested something toxic, I'm just going to use the activated charcoal or even the olive oil before ever using this. One thing that a lot of people will also keep in their vet kits is apple cider vinegar. I personally would not be using apple cider vinegar on ducks. I think it might actually be a lot safer for chickens, but ducks specifically are waterfowl and they're really supposed to only be drinking things like water and adding apple cider vinegar can raise the pH and having acidic and high pH foods in general is not good for ducks. So I personally will not be using that. It also may come as a surprise to some people that I don't keep any wormers on hand. Specifically for me, that's because if I suspect worms in my ducks, I am going to get a fecal float test to determine what type of worms I have before using a wormer. I've never had problems with worms before and I do get my um, ducks fecal tested every year when they go to their vet appointments. So honestly, it's not something that I really worry too much about and I don't need to keep it on hand if I'm not gonna need it. Another thing I don't keep on hand that a lot of people do is called diatomaceous earth. It's essentially little bugs, I think, that like are sharp and kill things from the inside out if they're ingested which is why people use them to treat like mites and stuff. Waterfowl specifically are not very prone to getting mites or lice because they are water birds and they're always in the water and the mites and lice and stuff would basically suffocate if it were to get to them. Now that doesn't mean it's impossible to get lice or mites if you are a duck, but it's very unlikely. And I have heard a lot of bad things about diatomaceous earth specifically from the vets that I've heard, talked to. So it's not something that I would consider safe around my birds, but I do use first Saturday lime in my coop. And a few things that I don't have in my vet kit right now, but I will be planning on adding. Number one is Musher Secret, which I've mentioned earlier. I'll also be adding Preparation H, which is a hemorrhoid cream. And I also plan on adding Milk of Magnesia to my vet kit. That was something that I had originally been prescribed from the vet when I had issues with Duncan and the liver failure, but I think it's just something good to keep on hand. 
That's all for today, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing everything I keep in my pet ducks vet kit. I definitely recommend keeping a vet kit for your own ducks or really any livestock animal if you have them, just in case of an emergency, because you never know what could happen and you never know when the vet might not be open. If you have any questions or comments about these products, feel free to let me know in the comments or if there's anything you suggest I should add to my vet kit, please let me know. And I'm also gonna be linking all of these products down below to make it easier for you to find them if you wanna start your own vet kit for your ducks. Have a quacktastic day.